Kyrie Irving goes for 60? Is Miami truly the number one seed in the East? And is the playing tournament actually working? It's the Wednesday episode of Locked On NBA. Let's go. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Wednesday edition of Locked On NBA, the daily podcast covering everything you want to know about the association. And on Wednesdays, I'm your co-host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, and host of the Locked On Pelicans podcast. And I'm John Corrales, host of the Locked On Celtics podcast. Find me on Twitter at John underscore Corrales. Thank you for making Locked On First listen every day. We're free and whenever you get your podcast, no paywall or anything like that, just covering the association five days a week. And today's episode of Locked On NBA is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out prizepicks.com. Use promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made. John, you know what? It was also easy. Another, another Tuesday <laughs> night in the NBA. These were not the most interesting games we've ever had here. No, we've seen we see uh, 150, 135, and 131 points dropped on some suspect defenses <laughs> in the uh, in the league. Uh, blowouts galore on a very uh, low slate. You know, you don't want to compete against March Madness, so let's just get these games in, get these games out, and let's move along. Look, but there were some things that happened, and let's lead off with the Brooklyn Nets just straight up smoking, as they should have, the Orlando Magic 150-108. Kyrie Irving just, you know, casual 60 (laughs) points in in this one. Like, uh, dude loves playing on Tuesday nights, I think. I guess so, man. We have 50. uh, (laughs) Last week we were talking about a 50-point game. My favorite thing as I look at the the box score is no one else on the team took more than 10 shots. And Kyrie took 31 <laughs> shots, but he, he was hitting, man. Hit 20 of 31, 8 of 12 from 3, 12 of 13 from the line. I mean, he did everything he could. Um, he got back out there in the fourth quarter so he could drop 60. He hit that three-pointer. The whole place exploded. They call a timeout. He gets all the hugs from the bench. Let me just – look, this is what Ky- Kyrie is, is capable of doing, which is what we talked about last week, that Kyrie is capable of coming in, uh, if he gets hot, if you let him get going, then all of a sudden those dribbles get a little tighter. The you know the shot gets a little more pure, and that's what's going to make them just almost impossible to beat some nights. Whether they get Ben Simmons or not, I know there's some question about whether they're actually going to get him or not. But if, if you get Kyrie going like this, then then Kevin Durant can be like, yeah, nine shots, I'm cool. You do all the work. I'm just going to sit here and clap when you keep hitting shots. I mean, he's a wild – he's capable of putting on a show, and he put on the best show of his – as far as scoring-wise, the best show of his life. Like The other thing, though, about Kevin Durant is, yeah, he took nine shots. Just like the easiest 19 points that dude has probably ever had. That's insane efficiency, and that's what this Nets team is just capable of doing. You know, this was not – one of those games where you look at it and it's like, oh, just Kyrie hunting his own shot, going and getting those points. 60 points on 31 shots is an incredible number. That is not something that just happens by accident, right? Like the efficiency is high. This is not 60 points on 50 shots where you're like, okay, that dude was clearly stats hunting. And then Durant on nine shots to go and score 19 is also incredible efficiency. And they had 34, 35 assists in this game. I forget the actual number. This is like where you look at the Nets and go, oh, 35, right? Like this team is when things are firing for them. And again, it's without Ben Simmons and what he's capable of providing. He kind of fits perfectly. It feels like on this team. Oh yeah. They're, they're really good. And this is a team that's going to be in the play in tournament. I know. I know. But you were making the point about they, this is a very different team without Kyrie. And so if you, if you have Kyrie and he's, he's pointing up, he obviously 60 and 50 and all of that, it's it's happening fairly frequently, but it's not something that's going to happen yeah. all the time, right? So, uh, but if you don't have him and the threat of him, then the Brooklyn Nets look very, very different. And this is, I'm just bringing back the point that I made last week about getting him on a full-time basis. And it is when will they? And will they at all? 
And if they don't in the play-in tournament, I mean, that's coming up in a month. So if things don't change, then you get into a play-in situation where you won't, you might not have him at all. That's so this is the most bonkers thing. And I hadn't put this together till I looked at the standings earlier tonight, right? Toronto's in seven, eight. That means Toronto is going to host that play in tournament game. Being in Canada, it means Ky- Kyrie doesn't, doesn't play. So let's say Brooklyn loses that. They're then going to host host in Brooklyn, the winner of the ninth versus 10 seed game. That's Atlanta versus Charlotte right now. Say that's Atlanta. All of a sudden, it's Brooklyn versus Atlanta in Brooklyn without Kyrie Irving. There's a chance he doesn't play if the standings stay as they are in in either play-in tournament game. Mm -hmm. That's... This is... Like, I'm really speechless. It's nuts, though. This is that is nuts, and this is what makes the 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 rest of this season kind of really really important for Brooklyn and really really important for for Toronto. And I was you know I was look at Sean Woodley on on Twitter talking about the the Chicago Bulls have like this really difficult record. He's looking at Toronto maybe leapfrogging and and getting into the the top six. If that happens, they're only a game out. Then if Cleveland falls or Boston falls or Chicago falls for some reason, then that changes the dynamic. Then Kyrie can play. Uh, if Brooklyn, now Brooklyn has what this was their 69th game. So they have 13 games left and one, uh, two and a half games Good behind math, Toronto. Yeah. Yes. Was I right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I was right. Uh, so uh, they, they have, four games with Kyrie Irving left, which means they have, what I say, 13 games, that nine, <laughs> it's too much quick. Also math. excellent. Math. They, have, they have nine without him. And those are kind of going to be the crap shoots. Uh, if, if they can't make up that ground in Toronto, like they have the opportunity to flip this and make, you know, get them up to the seventh seed. And if Toronto has to visit them, obviously, then that well, obviously, then he still can't play either. So, <laughs> but they they have the opportunity to make up some ground, but they don't have Kyrie there to to make up that ground. So, um, if they can't get into sixth, then they're in trouble. And there, it's a it's conceivable that Kyrie could play those four games, and those be the last four games he plays this season for Brooklyn and for all of the people that are mad at Eric Adams and mad at that. It's still, it's still very simple. It's still a very simple formula for Kyrie Irving. He is choosing not to get the vaccine. That is his choice. We can debate if you want. I'm not going to make this political. I'm sick of that debate, but this is his choice. And if he wanted to play regularly, he would just get vaccinated like everyone else did and he will play. And so that's just how it is. That's a situation. And if he only plays four more games for the nets and they stay in that eighth spot and they end up losing two play in games because he's not on that team. I, as a Brooklyn nets fan would be upset that I would be upset more at Kyrie than the rules because Kyrie has had ample opportunity to do what most NBA players have done, which is get the vaccine. No, you said it really well. It's it's like the meme from Knives Out with Daniel Craig, where it's like it makes no damn sense, but it really, but it's it compels me because the end of season here, I'm going to be standings watching this so much when there's a lot of drama there that he's almost manufacturing himself by not getting the vaccine and you could eliminate all of this. And it probably makes some of this kind of boring, frankly, for these final 13 games. Thank you for that. And <laughs> all of that. So it's just, it, it, it's kind of wild. And we'll get into it in the third segment when we talk more about the playing tournament working or not working. We're never going to see something like this again, probably. So I don't know, maybe enjoy the roller coaster ride that we're seeing here a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I, look, it, <laughs> Yeah, let's, uh, with, let's save it. Let's save it. Let's save it for the the plan. It was like let's save it. We got we got more to talk about here. So coming up next, 
is Miami like, truly the number one seed given all of this? If they actually get the best record in these, we'll talk about it coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On NBA. But before we do that, today's episode of Locked On NBA is brought to you by Prize Pick. Right, NBA fans, are you looking for a daily fantasy option for the NBA? Then you need to try the award winning app, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. I love this and I know you will too. It's super easy to use. You pick two to five players and an over under on their project can win up to 10 times on any entry and it's just you versus the projected numbers you're not playing against people who do this for a living where they've got 10 monitors and some kind of crazy algorithm that they're using to find the right place you see the numbers in advance you go above or below it it's really that simple entries can be made in 60 seconds or less it's really that easy and price picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals and you get to use the award-winning app that's available on both the app store and google play and price picks offers any prop you can think of point scores, rebounds, steals, whatever it is, and you can even get mixed sports entries. You want to take Joel Embiid or Nikola Jokic and the dominance they're on in points per game, you could take that and a soccer player if you really wanted to. And PrizePix doesn't offer just NBA. They have options on college basketball, college football when it's in season, the NFL, MLB, soccer, MMA, and more. So for a limited time, PrizePix has an exclusive no-brainer of an offer for all of our users. You're going to get 50 Fifty dollars for free if a player in your first prize pick entry scores a single. But you must use promo code NBA. That's right. This is an exclusive offer for Locked On fans. Sign up today. Use promo code NBA. Fifty dollars free. Free money right there if a player in your first prize pick entry scores a single point. All right. Thank you for making the Locked On NBA your first listen every day. We're free and available five days a week right here on YouTube wherever you get your podcast. Break down all of the biggest stories around the association. It was just Kyrie Irving scoring 60 and the Brooklyn Nets being really good when everyone's healthy. You know, there's another team that's good in the East, though, and maybe we're not talking about them enough. And that's the Miami Heat, who just beat the Detroit Pistons 105-98. No Jimmy Butler for them. Sorry, he did play in this one. He had a bad game. That's why I forgot about him. Yeah, just eight points. (laughs) The second half with a sprained ankle. That's, That's why. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, but they won this, and they're the top seed in the East. And let's just jump into it, John. We don't need to talk too much about this game. You can check out Locked On Now if you really want that with the local experts breaking down these games. Real or fake, the Wednesday segment we always do here, I- I'm not going to do the echoey voice as well as you, but real <laughs> or fake, if if Miami gets – if Miami has the best record in the East – do you are they truly the number one seed given how weird this year is? So I we we conceptualized this segment hours and hours and hours ago. <laughs> I've been I've been contemplating this back and forth. Um I've been I've been torn on whether this is real or fake because I can understand that the Philadelphia 76ers have gone through crazy season. And they, the, the team that finishes this season is not the team that started it. Same potentially with the Brooklyn Nets. Um, same in, in some ways with the, you know, the Boston Celtics with their turnaround. Yeah. Um, you can make cases here, and even, even the Milwaukee Bucks, you can make a case for the champions kind of coasting and all of that stuff. There are a lot of reasons for me to say fake. However, however, I I want I, I I just I feel like I'm going to give the nod to Miami and say it's real because they also have had their share of injuries and they they have had plenty this they had a long stretch without Kyle Lowry they have Jimmy Butler in and out of the lineup they they aren't immune from a lot of the things that have happened um, yet they continue to find a way. Um, they have gotten Max Struess, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of production out of him. They have found production out of places that other teams don't seem to find it. The, as much as people want to scoff at the, the heat culture, I do believe that there is something to that. And Eric Spolstra is an elite head coach. And we don't talk about that quite enough because he's just been elite for a while and we just accept it. And so there are certainly question marks with Miami heading into the playoffs. Um, What Kyle Lowry is going to be, uh, is he saving himself? Like he had a long stretch in this game against Detroit where he didn't even take a shot. And, and 
is is he just saving himself and making sure everyone else gets kind of gets right so when the playoffs when he starts to take over those guys are are in a comfortable confident rhythm like there's certainly something to be said about Lowry doing that so there is a level bam out of bio it play it is is an elite defender they you know well coached he's in the running for defensive player of the year right like Absolutely. there's there's a lot of talent still on this team. Like uh, Tyler Hero is going to win six man probably is what Tyler I would guess. Tyler Hero had a huge stretch in this game where he he won this game with some of the the stretches of shooting that he's had. So I've, I've got to give the respect to the team that has earned it and, and occupies the top spot. If they finish with the top spot, they've had enough adversity and they've pulled themselves through it through a variety of ways where – even though I'm not going to say they 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 will be the dominant number one, but I will give them the respect of saying they have earned that number one seed. So I'm going to recognize them as that number one seed. Look at you being unbiased in the Eastern Conference here, and, hey man, and I'm a no, I mean, you, <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. Like I've gone back and forth when we when we talked about the segment at like 5 p.m. on Tuesday, yeah. trying to kind of come up with what the show was going to be, right? And you know. I, I wanted to find a reason not to give it to him. It kind of is more hot take to be like, no, Brooklyn as as the play in tournament oh, team yeah. is actually the truly number. And you could you could make an argument for that, right? You mentioned it, Absolutely. like you you've got the 76ers who have been a piece away for like all year, and they just didn't have. Now you added you know James Harden, and that elevates them. And look at how good they've been. Even Milwaukee with Giannis going on kind of like the heater and the stretch that he's been on. It's like maybe that he's just peaking at the right time at the end of the year, and they're the true number one seed. But I I think you mentioned it, and it's Eric Spolstra, right? Like, I wanted to find reasons to discount this Miami Heat team. And then I remembered that Eric Spolstra is easily (laughs) a top five, top three coach in the NBA and has been for a really long time. It's kind of how I always refuse to kind of rule out the San Antonio Spurs as long as Greg Popovich is there. Even when you look at the roster, you're like, that team's not great. But look at them. They're still competitive right now. Spolster is kind of in that same vein, I think. And so when I look at this team, you know, being a top five uh, defense, top 10 offense, they really have it all together when they're healthy. And that's kind of the key, right? But that's that's a great equalizer on everything in that team. Yeah. They're probably deserving of being the number one seed to be able to weather absences from Bama to Bio, going to be maybe the defensive player of the year, has missed a lot of games, right? If you're able to do that and still be as consistent as they are, I've got to give you a lot of credit for that, I think. And so I wanted to shortchange them in a sense, but then you kind of look at the whole season you know, the, as a whole and like, yeah, I can't do that, I don't think. Yeah, I think what what we what's really happening here is Miami, Milwaukee, Philly, Boston, Brooklyn are in in Chicago are the top six teams, I think, in the East. All due respect to Cleveland, and they'll get Jared Allen back, it seems. But I, I think those other teams are the top six. And basically throw them into a hat, pull out a name, and if if However, you want to slot those top six, it's it's probably you can make an argument for just about any of them, right? And you can, yeah. I think Milwaukee probably has the strongest argument, you know, but Miami is up there and, and Philly has their argument, and Brooklyn certainly, when they're fully healthy on the road, they have their argument. But, <laughs> but I think, I think why we're tempted to say Miami's not the true number one seed is because nobody is the true number one seed that this Eastern conference playoffs more than anyone that we've seen in a long time, hell maybe ever is so even that it's going to be matchup based. Any one of these teams has a legitimate shot to make the NBA finals. And you can say the, 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 whatever, whoever you want to slot first, is you know whatever percentage but that percentage is not markedly higher than number two three four five six and that's that's where we have this debate so i will give miami all due respect for earning that top seed they're a legitimate top seed but also milwaukee is a legitimate top seed philly would be a legitimate top seed brooklyn fully healthy boston fully healthy 
Chicago has proven they they have a, a stake to that. It, it's just the East is so even that everybody can make that claim. So it's it's a fun debate, but in the end, it's whoever has it at the top, whoever's sitting at the top at the end gets the the joy of saying, "Hey, we've earned this top spot." Although I guess the, the reward might be playing the Brooklyn Nets in the first round. So that's the congratulations. <laughs> like, how much does that suck, right? You you have the best record in the East all season long. You've been good. You have people like like, but almost us counting you out. And what mm-hmm. is your reward to prove all the haters wrong? The, the Brooklyn yeah. Nets with Kyrie, who if you know the the New York rules are still in place in a month and all of that, if it, if it goes to a game seven can play on on the road so your home court advantage is nullified to a certain degree when maybe it would be better to play in new york to a certain degree yeah it's it almost makes you wonder jake if this playing tournament is actually working you you are a pros pro john so let's talk <laughs> let's let's, let's talk about that coming up next that's that's that segue. Segue. you just sat there you're like whoa that's that. That's oh, my that version so of that's my version you, that of, was like, uh, rock the baby dunk. I'm like I'm walking back like doing this. If you see it, my oh rock man, that w- that was excellent. It does make you wonder: Should this be how it's going? Is this what we want? Let's talk about that in the Memphis game coming up here in the next segment of today's episode of Locked On NBA. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked On NBA is brought to you by Built Bar. This is easy. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar out there. I struggle with some sugar cravings, and I've been trying to eat healthier this year, and Built Bar has been my absolute secret weapon because these things taste like a candy bar, but they're healthy for you. So whenever I have a sugar craving, I grab a bite of a Built Bar, and I look forward to it. It doesn't even make it seem like I'm missing out on candy or sweets or things like that. They're so good, you're going to be looking forward to eating Built Bars. And if you tried the Built Puffs, and if you haven't, you're missing. It's the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're light. They're like nothing you've ever tried. And like all Built Bars, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. I eat a Built Bar basically for lunch every single day, and it's awesome. They have delicious flavors. I love the mint brownie. I have the churro puff bar, which is cinnamony and awesome. I also have the coconut brownie chunk, which You'll straight up think is a candy bar with how good it tastes, but you go to built.com and you look at the macros. Only 130 calories, four grams sugar, four net carbs, 17 grams of protein. These are awesome for you. So if you eat a protein bar, whether it's before or after a workout in the morning for breakfast, during lunch, you don't need to eat the one that's heavy and dense and tastes metallic-y and awful and too hard to chew that you need to you know, drink a bottle of water down after it. Go with a built bar. These are the best tasting ones. They're just as good, if not better, than the ones you're already trying. And if you want to give them a try, go to built.com. This is the promo code that I use that John uses. The promo code is LOCKED15. You're going to get 15% off your next order over at built.com. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off over at built.com. All right, thank you for making Locked On NBA your first listen every day. We're here Monday through Friday, five days a week, putting in excellent segues from one segment to (laughs) the next. As John just said, so so let's touch on the other game that we – there's two games here. There's the Memphis Grizzlies just basically doing what they should have done against the Indiana Pacers, 135-102. No John John Morant out with a back injury for the Memphis Grizzlies, but – Man, that team I think has impressed me the most is they're good when John Morant is out. I don't know how many teams can point to the record that they have when their best player and best player by far is out and just win and win as consistently as they do. There's some real depth to this team, and there's a reason they're kind of locked in almost as that three seed in the Western Conference. Yeah, man. I mean, you you look at uh, Desmond Bain, who, you know, steps up with a a 21-point game. Uh, he's, he's awesome. Um, you know, Jaron Jackson, here's the thing with, with Memphis, they know what they're doing and that's, that's such a key. They're in that Memphis, Memphis is in that, uh, Phoenix class that when you know what you're doing, you can sustain the absence of, uh, of a star because the next, you're not just reliant on that star. Obviously, you you rely on John Morant, but they get by without him because they they all know this is my job. This is what we're doing, and we're going to continue to execute. And some guys realize, 
hey, I'm, I'm going to have to step up. And some guys do. Uh, you know, you get the Anthony Melton stepping up off the bench. You got Brandon Clark stepping up off the bench. You know, you got guys who who can and understand their role. And and it's very simple. It's It starts from the coach and it starts with everybody buying in. This is how you know a team is legit. When somebody goes down, can you sustain it? Memphis is legit. Phoenix is legit. Yeah, they've proven they it. Doing it with without the, yeah, they keep on proving it. It's not about Ja. It's about the the system. And then Ja. Now you throw Ja into that system, and it's like it's not. I'm not calling him a system guy. I'm just saying that you throw this elite talent who participate onto these guys who have stepped up right like that's the thing like this is huge in the long term you need someone has an off game in the playoffs you feel much more comfortable relying on a guy like you know um jaron jackson jr or desmond bain both of whom are good anyway but it just shows they're capable of stepping up in those moments which takes a little bit of the pressure off of your star player and john morant that's only going to make you a better team like that's never a bad thing to have yeah no that that's that's the whole thing it's you you've got your mega star, you know, your mega watt guy that in the playoffs you're gonna have to rely on. But when it, it and it's not about just when he's not playing, what about when he has a bad game? Because he's gonna have a yeah, bad exactly. game. It's this makes you comfortable in saying, Hey, you know what? If you're John Morant, you're watching a game like this, and yeah, it's against Indiana, but you you know, you torch Indiana so badly, it's just a thorough beatdown. And he's seen it happen over they, and over. They didn't make it like hard either in this one, to yeah, be honest. Right. <laughs> it's also shooting six of tw- six of from three. If you're the Indiana Pacers, like, yeah, sure. But, but also, this is what should have happened, right? Right. But when you're John, you say, "Look at the the way these guys go without me." It it just is you. It actually builds this level of trust from your star. Yeah. To say, hey, if there's a night where I don't have it, I don't feel compelled to force it. I'm just going to keep playing the right way. And if the shots fall, they fall, but I'm going to, I can trust my teammates because I've seen them do it without me. So I know when I give them the ball, they know what to do. And that's just a big thing to have. That level of trust is, is huge. And that will help them overcome when Ja has a, you know, a six for 20 night, which is going to happen sometimes. And teams are going to key in on him in the playoffs, right? Like he's going to have bad games. He's going to have to make a decision of, do I go through a triple team or pass out to the guy in the corner? Now that he's seen his teammates make those shots and make plays, he's going to feel, as you said, much more comfortable making the right decision. That just makes that team a little bit scarier when it comes to the Memphis all over the Indiana Pacers in this one. No real surprise. And then we get to the final game of the night, which is going to spark the larger discussion here. And that's the Phoenix Suns. No Chris Paul still. 31 over uh 131 one over the new orleans pelicans he said no answer for anything that they want to do offensively and could not close out on three-point shooters eight of 30 or sorry 18 of 34 53 percent for the phoenix suns from in this one you're going to beat most teams if you're capable of doing that devin booker with 27 points so this leads to the larger discussion that i want to have look i, I cover the pelicans i've been in the play in tournament in the post season the same point they're they're not good the team that they're competing with for the ninth seed is the los angeles lakers and look the lakers are bad they're really really bad even lakers fans will tell you that right now and you look at a team like minnesota right on the heels right of carl anthony towns having that huge game the other night the los angeles clippers who are an above 500 team is this fair to both of those teams, right? The Timberwolves are 40 and 30 this year. Clippers are 36 and 35. Los Angeles, the Lakers, 29 and 39. And then the Pelicans are 28 and 41. Look, as much as I'd like to see New Orleans in the postseason. Yeah. Is this what the tournament was really intended to be? To maybe have a kind of putrid team at times catch lightning in a bottle lebron scores 50 points twice in a row because that's the only way the lakers can win right now and they get into the playing tournament and then get swept in the first round is this like truly the intention of the playing tournament do you think so it depends on how you're who, who are you asking are you asking me then i'll say no this will suck because there's a the possibility of Minnesota playing the Clippers and beating the Clippers and Minnesota at 40 and 30 currently and 10 games above five. Let's say they stay 10 games above 500 and finish the season. 
you know, like that. If, if the Lakers beat the Pelicans, which they should, and then if it's Minnesota and Los Angeles and LeBron goes LeBron and you get Anthony Davis all of a sudden, the the losing Minnesota losing and missing the playoffs when you've ascended to the seventh seed. And yeah, and that, that to me, you're, you're 10 I, games better than the Lakers are you're 11 game better than the Lakers right now. And so your core, your work over the course of the season is almost rendered pointless, right? right? Like it really, you really have the argument of, well, what the F is the regular season? <laughs> what, what did we do? Why did we play this regular season if the Lakers can just, you know, slip slide their way all the way down the standings and then they finally get healthy and it's like, oh, okay, they beat us and and maybe they'll go and they'll lose in the first round anyway. But if you're Minnesota, like you not only your your fans are are excited about a playoff run, you're excited about as an owner, you're excited about playoff revenue you're very excited about stuff that doesn't normally happen two home games you know like right um and then but at the same time if you're asking the league they're sitting there going please lakers beat the pelicans please beat minnesota because first round uh lakers grizzlies adds cachet because now not only do you have a big market lakers playing the small market grizzlies you also have the the animosity that's been built with Desmond Bain saying no those footsteps don't scare anybody <laughs> and all that stuff so so the league is like please we want ratings compelling nature so the league is going to sit there and be like yeah on both sides you want Brooklyn the New York market and you want LA the you know the LA market both in the playoffs Th- for them this play-in tournament is their salvation potentially for getting two high interest teams or two major markets, the two biggest markets into the playoffs, which sucks because yeah. as a fan, as a fan, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see teams that have, you know, jerked around, you know, all season long. And, and I don't want the Lakers to be rewarded for the Westbrook trade and for, for completely botching the whole thing. I don't want them to get rewarded for anything. They don't deserve yeah. it. <laughs> you know- there, there's kind of two sides here. Like you look at the Eastern Conference and you're like, this is what it should be, right? You know, the Charlotte Hornets who are in 10 have 34 wins. The uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers who are six or the Toronto Raptors who are seven have 39 and 38 respectively. You're within kind of like almost like the margin for error or something like that to make that kind of compelling. And then you get to the West, Western Conference and everyone at the bottom of this is kind of terrible. Again, Minnesota has 40 wins. The Pelicans who are 10th have 28 that's a big enough difference that it's like you almost feel kind of bad about it should the Pelicans, and I'm saying this is the guy that covers the team and roots for him, right, that would get in. On the flip side, though, if you're Adam Silver, it's not just the markets thing, right, and getting the bigger, giving the bigger markets a chance to get into the postseason and the ratings that come with all that. You also have the Pelicans not tanking right now when, frankly, they probably yeah. should be to a certain degree, right? The, I can tell you, being at the game tonight, the lower bowl part of it was packed. If they were, if there was no playing tournament, there, there no one's showing up to that game. No one has right, any right. interest in this team whatsoever. Probably same for the San Antonio Spurs, who are twelfth in the Western Conference with twins. They're still having a chance to get in there, and mm-hmm. so on one side it makes the league more compelling and it means teams aren't going to tank. And that feels like the true reason this playing tournament was created was to disincentivize tanking and at least give some stakes to the end of the regular season. When a lot of the time, the regular season just feels relatively pointless and it, that it doesn't have stakes. It doesn't truly matter. You're kind of eliminating that, but for some of these other teams, basically the losers of the playing tournament, you've actually, after the fact, rendered the regular season irrelevant and pointless. It's a tough balancing act, I think, right? Like, look, I love that there's – even the Sacramento Kings are trying to win games. They should totally be tanking. (laughs) And, you know, like they're they're in this to a certain degree. And so I love that, that we're, you know, almost mid – we're mid-March, almost end of March, and teams are still trying. And it made for a very interesting trade deadline line with a bunch of teams kind of going for broke and the Kings being two of those teams. So I think that's good for the league, but there's definitely a team or two that's going to be done dirty on this. Yeah. I also think that 
I think someone in the league might sit there and argue that th these are kind of aberrations in, in a lot of senses. Like the, the fact that Brooklyn, the reason why Brooklyn is this far down in the standings is, is yes. especially an aberration, as we said at the beginning. Because if there You're was... You're never going to see this again. You're never going to see another uh, part-time player again. Right. The way that this went down is is so unique. And frankly, maybe you still have James Harden if that doesn't happen. So so that that changes the entire dynamic. And so Brooklyn pops up to the top and maybe Cleveland or somebody else drops into that play-in. And it, it, it functions more as the way it's supposed to. Where Toronto, and let's just push it down one. Cleveland and Toronto are fighting. Yeah. And Atlanta and Charlotte are fighting. And then you got like a bunch of teams who are somewhat evenly matched. And you say, okay, let's, it, it doesn't matter because those teams probably don't have a chance at making a deep run. It doesn't matter who the four teams are. Like the argument would be stop debating this because you're talking about four bad teams or four teams that aren't that great. So, and if, if the seventh and eighth seeds are good, then they should be able to handle their business. But this what we're having all they have is here. one game, right? Like it, it's it's Just not like they need to win a playoff series, right? So the seventh, both of them, right? Even if I play two games, you just got to win one, right? And so, like the seventh seed, if you win, then you win. Uh, if you lose, though, you've got to face you know the Lakers or New Orleans, and you, you just don't want that that thing to happen. And but even the Lakers are a bit of an aberration because they've like nothing has gone right. Like absolutely <laughs> nothing has gone right for the Lakers. They are 29 they're, and 30. They're 2 and 0 oh when LeBron thing. scores 50 after the All-Star break. That's that's yeah, a really good set. They're undefeated when thinks. he's awesome. Yeah, he's going to have to average We don't 50. we don't need to talk about the flip side of that record. <laughs> but, you know, like it it would be I think I think the play in tournament like we're in such small sample size that the these yeah. these are such like they seem bigger and if this let's just pretend it lasts for 20 years we do something 20 years from now we this looks like maybe potentially much more of an outlier than the the way it normally goes so i think the we still have to give it a chance but in the meantime i would just hate for the timberwolves to have to face the lakers in a play-in situation after everything that they've done and have earned the seventh or eighth seed. So if they lose to the Clippers, let's say, and then you've got to play the Lakers to, to fight for your, your, your playoff lives, that would be unfortunate for a team like Minnesota, who just, they're one of those teams that just deserves, like you've worked at it, you've done it. Carl Anthony Towns has been amazing. And, you know, he just dropped 60. And, and, and now you're going to potentially lose all that because LeBron goes ham and had, drops 50 in a play-in game, and there you go. You do? That would suck. That would suck, and I, I don't want to see that happen. So hopefully do you think doesn't. there's Do you think there's a compromise like what they did in the bubble where it was basically you had to be well, – it was you had to be within a certain amount of games, five games of teams in that when they kind of had like the play-in tournament i like that is that like the that. move and they might do yeah that's, that's it only that's you might not have it every year you might not have it in each conference every year you might have it in one conference one year but you've got to be within like a certain amount you've got to be within four games five games and then cool you can chalk up the difference in wins maybe to some injuries to, to some weird stuff it works in the eastern conference say this year and then you have the playing tournament in the west where it's like yeah no th those teams yep. aren't in this and right. the top eight's already set i like that i think i think that's the solution you solve the nba again fixed it you fixed it. i do think that's the solution that's a good point yeah because in the east yeah that's that's close enough where you know, I, i've got no issue if atlanta or charlotte or toronto like that that's that's fine you're, you're all somewhat even yeah I, I i like that solution i like that solution yeah, I think that's the way, right? Like, it doesn't need to be an automatic thing. You've had to have had a good enough season that puts you just close enough to the teams ahead that, okay, we've triggered kind of like a one-game play-in scenario. You know, things happen over the course of the year. Injuries happen. This kind of levels that out a little bit and takes some of those injuries being the great equalizer out of there. I think that – I don't know what the right number is. Maybe it's not five games. Maybe it's just a three 
three game differential, something along the, but there's definitely a number I think that works and kind of makes it fair all around. And then if the Timberwolves lose to a team that was three games behind them, you, you should have handled business. You should have a team that was pretty equal to you, not a team that is 12 games or 13 games behind you in the standings essentially. right that's that's that would be horrible 10 games behind them in the standings out yeah that i like that limitation thing i like that there we go all right we're gonna end it on that note where i'm awesome for a quick second there um and that's gonna do it for today's episode of locked on forget subscribe wherever you get your podcast Podcast and available on YouTube. And I'm your co-host Jake Madison at Nola Jake on Twitter and the host of the Locked On Pelicans podcast. And I'm John Corrales at John underscore Corrales on Twitter, and I host the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thank you all for listening. We'll be back with you all next week.